Name's Randy Barber, and I guess you wanted to know the background a little bit of our story or how we got into all this. And uh, it all started for me basically when the Ottawa truckers had their event in Ottawa, Canada. I was watching that because I'd been looking for a reason to, for a way to get involved with the Patriot movement of some sort because I see a lot of things going on in the country that weren't really looking too good. And, then when November 3rd, 2020 hit, I knew something was wrong and we had to do something. I knew we had to stand up. So I watched the Ottawa convoy wondering why we weren't doing something like that. Next thing you know, there's a convoy coming out of Adelano, California, and they're heading for Washington, D.C. I said, well, that's my ticket. I told the wife I was going down for a couple days to see what was going on. So I left with a group out of Niagara Falls, New York. I'm from out on the southwestern corner of New York near Jamestown. Joined up with those guys, went on down to Hagerstown is where we ended up going to about 80 miles north of Washington DC and it's kind of amazing all the way down almost every overpass that we went underneath. Uh, people were standing by the roads, the cornfields, you name it, they were everywhere. Uh, never forget it. I think uh, we were giving each other hope. The people that were on the overpasses were getting hope from seeing that convoy going through and the convoy was getting hope from seeing all the people cheering us on. It was uh, quite the event. But we spent a few weeks down around Washington DC area, down there working out of the Hagerstown racetrack. And uh, eventually the decision was made to kind of disband for the most part. And a lot of guys was going home to their home states. A lot of patriots are gonna make movements convoys whatever in their home states so I went home to New York with that in mind New York being one of the toughest states if you ask me as far as kind of a uphill climb for Patriots for conservatives New York's not a very friendly place for all that at least in some areas where I'm at it's very conservative I'm out there in the southwest corner but I went home to start a convoy and I started looking around trying to figure out how to do all that and I run into some other Patriots that were already doing that a week or two ahead of me, maybe more. Not sure the exact timeline, but I was glad to see that I didn't have to invent the wheel. <laughs> and kind of got in with those people and was glad that something was happening and we started to build a convoy. And I'd only been in that effort for about 48 hours and my phone rang and it turned out to be a young lady named Bethan Nodwell from Ottawa, Canada area. And she was reaching out to the New York convoy because the Ottawa truckers were reorganizing, regrouping, and wanted to get back in the game again. And they were looking for some American support, wanted to rally with Americans at the border, wanted me to bring the New York convoy to the border. I said, well, I'd be more than happy to do that, but I've only been doing this for 48 hours. So far, I got two trucks and one of them is mine. <laughs> but nevertheless, All right. within three weeks or so, we were... Uh, we put one together and we met at the Rainbow Bridge in Niagara Falls and that was the first event we had together and the first time that we had an opportunity to meet some of our Canadian friends but due to some of the ridiculous border restrictions that they had on because of COVID we were not really allowed to cross the line. We come to the line yeah. and that was it. So. After a few events, they finally got freed up uh, by the time we did the Batavia event in August and they were able to come across. That was the first time we were actually able to really spend some time together and that was a very enjoyable thing. But we've done a lot of things, you know. Uh, started out with People's Convoy in New York, which I'm still a part of. Matter of fact, we have a young lady here from the People's Convoy as well as some Unity Tour people. We've always worked together very closely, still do. And uh, we went to events in Albany, all across New York State, Vermont, Michigan. We've done border events, you know, with the Canadians all across from Vermont, New York, up in the Blue Water Bridge in Michigan and so on. So we've uh, organized or attended more rallies than I can count. We went to the Reawaken Tours. This is a second Trump rally for me. Some of our, our uh, Patriot friends here have done a lot more Trump rallies than that. but. So we've done a lot of the rally things, and the thing of it is, is what it's, what the rallies do is it helps us find each other. That's a lot of what yep. came out of Hagerstown. 
we all networked and found each other and uh, made lifelong friendships just like Robert here. We met down there in Hagerstown and kind of took a liking to each other and we were operating down there for a few weeks and uh, he went home to Michigan, I went home to New York. Next thing you know, we're both leads in the North American Unity Tour. And Let me pause you for one second. Okay. All right, so anyway, we did a lot of rallies and are continuing to do so. But uh, other than that, we're doing a lot of uh, homework, I call it. Uh, we got involved with signing petitions. Uh, New York had a terrible law. We called it the COVID camp law. Uh, that was where they decided that if you were a danger, a health risk to the general public, that they could pick you up and put you in a camp wherever they decided for as long as they want without charges. Jeez. That doesn't sound very American to me. No. So we got involved with that, got petitions, and we had a, an attorney out of Manhattan. Her name is Bobby Ann Cox, who did an interview with, I believe, the Gateway Pundit earlier tonight in New York, but I'm not quite sure. Maybe it was Epic Times or one or the other. I know she just did another interview because it's being appealed, but she did take it to the court, Supreme Court in New York, and she won the case. And they're going to take it in for appeal, but I think we'll, I think they'll win it again. But we've been involved with that, and then we got involved in the New York Citizens Audit, which is a group of citizen volunteers, but they're very qualified. They've got computer people, they've got accountants, they've got everything they need. Uh, they've got a legal department whatever and they have done a wonderful job of uncovering uh, as they put it uh, irregularities in the election system I have a different word for it however yeah <laughs> uh, they found a lot of so many things but one of the main things that they've discovered that we're working on uh, is a lot of clone voters and I'm not really going to get into all the specifics of exactly what the numbers are we do know what the numbers are we know, do know it was uh not an accident it's uh it's pretty big yep. and uh they are taking legitimate voters and they are cloning those voters is what we call it they are taking uh, somebody who may have moved or somebody that has a second property or whatever and all of a sudden the second property has a state voter identification number attached to it which is completely illegal you are never yep. never ever never allowed to have two state voter ID numbers under any circumstances no. we see that there's a voter that has two numbers we know that there's a problem and so the convoy movement has quite a bit of manpower and we've been putting people in, out there to help out we're knocking on doors and trying to verify what we already know we're trying to verify the truth Absolutely. We're, t we're taking it to court. We're not going to let it go. We're not backing off. No, and we can't. No. We can't back off. We absolutely will not. So the next few days will be interesting. I don't know what will happen with the election. You hear all kinds of predictions from the red wave to they're going to cheat again to they're not going to have an election. So I guess the next two or three days will tell. But I can tell you one thing. If they do cheat again, it's going to be a lot easier to, you know, point that out because we oh, have yeah. a lot of information now that we didn't have on the yes. 3rd, 2020. And there's a lot more eyes on it as they're, well. Yeah. They're under the microscope. So. Just to nug right air on this shirt. I don't know if you can read it because it's oh, got yeah. the light in your eyes. But audit the vote, the vote PA, a yeah. big supporter yeah. of them. Yeah. My own heart. Every state's got a, an audit group and they're making big progress. Yeah. And so one of the latest projects we've gotten into I think I heard Robert talking about it a little bit, but uh, we first started getting asked for American support by our Canadian friends, and it does mean a lot to the, you know, Canada and the countries in Europe. It means a lot to them to have American support, have a little bit of hope and inspiration. Absolutely. The Americans, as we're always the last bastion of freedom, and that's kind of where we are again today. Yeah. So it means a lot to them, and uh, one of our friends from Canada, again, Beth and Nodwell, the very first lady that got a hold of me about all this from Canada. She had recently traveled to Europe and made some ties with some of the folks in the Netherlands, all over Europe actually, and came back saying, the Europeans would like to know where are the Americans. So I thought about that for a little while and I'm like, all right, how about we write them a letter of support? I don't know exactly what we can do, but we'll give them a letter of support, maybe send over a flag you know, a few pictures or whatever, just to recognize that we are with them and uh, we support them and we're here. 
So that was where the project started, sort of started. And we got a flag, we took it to the reawaken tour uh, down in Mannheim, Pennsylvania recently. We got a lot of signatures from Patriots out there. And uh, we got a lot of uh, some of the higher ups there. We had right up to General Flynn signed the flag. And so we were getting ready to set, ship that overseas with our letter of support. And I found out about this rally popped out of nowhere that we're having a Trump rally near Pittsburgh. And I'm like, well, that's not too far from me. That's about three and a half hours. Maybe we'll just hold that flag up and go down to that rally and get a few more signatures. And then uh, the thought occurred to me, well, as long as we're down here, why don't we see if we can get a signature for Donald, from Donald J. Trump. Mm. And that's the ultimate show of support. Yeah. So that didn't happen today. We didn't really expect that it would. But uh, we went ahead and let's just say we planted some seeds and tried to reach out and get the word to him. I think we've done that. So we'll see where that goes. Seeds of Liberty. Yeah. yeah. Got to plant the seeds of Liberty. Yeah. So that's uh, what we're up here, up to here. We hope that all turns out for us. I think it will at some point. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get that signature and that would be very meaningful to our friends in the Netherlands. So again, we were planning on just shipping that over there in the mail or whatever and it didn't ever really occur to us to go there. And we had one of the girls from the Netherlands on a conference call with Bethan from Canada, Robert and I, and they were uh, thinking that we shouldn't uh, put a flag with that much meaning in the mail we should bring that over in person and deliver it so long story short we're going to the netherlands and we're going to meet <laughs> with a big convoy that's awesome so that's what we're that is awesome now. so that's the latest greatest i guess all right the north american unity tour oh well, thank you that, that, you made you made an interview easy i didn't have to ask yeah. any more questions <laughs> yeah, okay? right that's well, good though i mean I, I you know i i was following that and posting in the trucker convoy uh and group they had so i'll make sure i get this out there as well all right, all right. but I'll, I'll send this over to a few people that might uh be interested in this okay. so thank you oh it was right. a pleasure well there you go oh, wait, let me let me hear your name one more time randy barber randy barber original, all right. one of the original founders and the lead in the north american unity tour this is robert from michigan if you met him yep here we are. Uh, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you for you taking the time thank with you. speaking with me. It's, I appreciate it greatly. Awesome. No problem. Glad to do it. All right.